Necron 99. All right, hey everybody, what's up? It's uh, 99, and today I'm back with you continuing my video series on the anatomy of a drum machine inside Beatmaker 2. So let's go ahead and load Beatmaker 2. Uh, I'm going to load a new project. I'm going to choose Drum Machine, and I'm going to load an empty preset. Okay, and so now we have our drum machine, and let's go ahead and open that. And last episode, I showed you um, how to use the preset tab in Beatmaker 2, and I did that in this video here. And today, I'm going to be showing how to use the sample tab inside Beatmaker 2, inside the drum machine. So, what you have here is you have your group, and you can choose your different groups here, or your different banks, I'm sorry. So right now, I'm in bank A. I'm going to tap the A, and it'll open up the bank list. And you can go from A to uh, to H and you can load banks and clear banks by using these buttons here so let's go ahead and go back to bank A and you have the load button underneath sample right here that's the first button I'm going to show you and load allows you to load um, basically audio files to the pads so by doing that by selecting a pad then selecting the load button you're going to select a particular sound file to load to that pad that you have selected. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and tap autoplay so that when you tap the sound file it plays for you automatically. I'm also going to tap disk streaming so that when you do load the file um, you're taking less stress off of the RAM inside Beatmaker 2 when you play the files. So let's go ahead and go through my content. I'm going to go to my samples, open up um, Urban Cookbook by Gold Baby. And let's go to the samples folder. Let's just go ahead and load a base. And 808. That's fine right there. So now that 808 is on this pad. And see how underneath, or see right here, you can see the, um, the name of the file. It's base underscore CROM. 808 underscore 001 and underneath that you can see it says streaming okay so that's how you load a sample and you can do that with each one of these pads okay if you want to try the quick load you tap the quick load button and it doesn't matter which pad you have selected when you tap that so go ahead and hit quick load and this window pops out from the left and autoplay is already selected at the bottom but I'm gonna go ahead and tap streaming so let's go ahead and see how quick load works. You, you go to your content. Let's see, I'll go to my samples again. Let's go to Urban Cookbook. Um, this time we'll load a metallic sound. And the way the quick load works is you can, you can scroll through and check out all your different um, sounds. But once you find a sound that you want, tap it and hold it, and then drag it to whatever pad you want it on. So now I have my cowbell on this pad. My bass kick is still over here. Okay, so that's how the quick load works. And then you can, since it's still open, if you want to go back a folder, hit the arrow to go back, and let's go ahead and choose a clap. I'm sorry, a clap. I'll drag that up here. And that's how the quick load works. Now, quick load always resets once you, uh, once you close it out. So if you close it out by hitting this X and you hit quick load again, it's not going to go back to the last folder that you had it on. That's just something to keep in mind. Okay, so record. If you have an input source or a way to record files, um, you can use the sample recorder to do so. So I'm going to choose input one, and what that is is it's using the microphone on the uh, the iPad. Now you're in monitor mode. You have your monitor off now, but if you turn it on, you'll be able to hear it uh, through either your speakers or your uh, headphones. So now that I can do that, I'm getting a little bit of a, a feedback loop. So let's go ahead and do this uh, real quick. 
I'm gonna turn monitor off just so I don't hear it. So let's go ahead and record. Hit play and it's just, or it's recording now. So you're at five seconds, I'm gonna stop it. You hit save. And now it's gonna allow you to save it to your folders. So I'm gonna take it back to my root. I'm gonna go into my samples. I'm just gonna throw it in here real quick. We'll do input one. And now it loaded it to the pad that I had selected. Let's go ahead and record. Hit play and it's just, or it's recording now. So you're at five seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. And that's how you use the record button here. Now you have the edit samples button. Let's go to edit samples. And what that does is it actually loads the sample you have on that pad. So if, if I have this one loaded, you go to edit sample, it's gonna load your cowbell. Back out. You have the clap loaded. It's gonna do that. So let's go ahead and edit. Let's go ahead and record. That ridiculous recording I did of myself. So I have that pad selected. I'm gonna edit samples. And here you have it right here. Let's go ahead and record. Let's go ahead and record. Okay, so inside there, you can, um, you can select parts that you wanna make edits to. Uh, you go to hit, you hit process down here and it'll take you to a different uh, options that you have. You can normalize, silence, reverse, fade in, fade out, cross fade, time stretch, and pitch shift. I'm just going to go ahead and throw a silence on that real quick. And now, let's go ahead and record. And now it's completely silent right there. And if you want to save that, you just hit the X, save it, and it saved that sample. Now that was a destructive save. Go ahead and record. It didn't give you, it, it saved it to that file. So now that file is permanently like that. If you want to do a save as, as a non-destructive measure, then you can do that as well. Now, the next button I'm going to show is edit bounds. Edit bounds. I open up that file. Same thing. It'll open up whatever uh, pad you have loaded. Let's go ahead and record. So edit bounds. And what bounds are is basically the amount of time that that sample is going to play. So this is the front. It's basically the start and end point of your sample. So you have this right here. That's your start bound. Okay. And if I hit, if I move it here, forward, 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 it changes the start point. So it starts later on the sample. So when I hit the pad, it'll do this. Forward, forward. Instead of doing it like this. Let's go ahead and record. Let's go ahead and record. Let's go ahead and record. And you can do that with your end point too. You can bring the end bound up here so it won't play the rest of that sample. Let's go ahead and record. See, and now it's done. Let's go ahead and record. Same thing, you hit X. And that one doesn't require a save, it's just actually saving the start. That's just your start and end points uh, settings for that particular pad. Now also, we have the fade in button. So let's go to fade in. Let's go ahead and record. Let's go ahead and record. And it's very slight. It's basically to take uh, clips off of the beginning of your your um, your sample. So if it has like a pop or a click, you can use that. Let's go ahead and record. Let's go ahead and record. And it'll it'll start from zero volume and take it up to uh, the max volume that you have it set to. And if you hit fade out, it'll do that on the on the endpoint of the sample as well. Let's go ahead and record. Let's go ahead and record so that it's not a harsh dropout. It just does a a gradual fade and lastly you have the clear button the clear button is basically just going to clear that pad clear pad yes and now there's nothing there so oh one last thing you see the multi button up here next to the the a group or a bank button multi allows you to select multiple pads at once to do a mass uh, change to a setting so I'm going to hit multi. It'll allow me to select whatever pads I want. So now I have these pads selected. And if I wanted to, to do a load, it's going to load that to each one of these pads. So now I have, oh, you have to take multi off in order to use the pads again. So hit multi. Let's go ahead and record. 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 And uh, just for... 
for future reference, if you hit stop twice on there, that's your panic button, and it'll stop all audio playing. And um, so that's it. That's the sample tab inside of the drum machine inside Beatmaker 2. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and um, leave a comment below, subscribe, and um, I'll see you next time. Peace.